ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾದಿಲಕ್ಷ ಏಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವಧೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಖಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಗುರುಚರಿತ್ರ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಏಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಷಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಕೋಕರ್ಣ ಆಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಸೇಜ್ ಗೌತಮ ಟು ಕಿಂಗ್ ಕಲ್ಮಾಶಪಾದ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಹೌ ಎ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ವರ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹರ್ ಲೈಫ್ finally came to gokarna and on the day of shivratri she inadvertently followed fasting and threw the leaves of bilwa on a shivalinga and could not able to sleep the whole night and for the same reason she was taken to shivaloka the next day morning when she died on hearing that story namadharaka asked siddhamuni how long shri guru shri pada shri vallabha stayed at gokarna and what happened later shri siddhamuni then replied to his words shri guru lived secretly for 3 years from there he went to shri giri after 4 months he went to nivritti sangama and hands to kuruvapura on the banks of krishna river there lived a brahmin well versed in veda and shastras we had a great we, we had a good nurtured he had that brahmana had a good nurtured devoted wife ambika by name she begot children but none survived except one son in due course his thread ceremony was celebrated but he was dull foolish and dumb hence the parents were much worried the brahman got b- brahman got tired while training him and at times beat him for not learning his lessons his wife could not bear his cruel treatment towards her only son the brahman later died after some time the woman lived with her son begging for their livelihood the son grew up but being foolish and poor no one liked to give one's daughter in marriage to him people said to him your father was a learned man but you are like a stone you have brought disgrace to his family how are you not ashamed of begging for your living for better give up your life in the ganga river he was aggrieved to hear such harsh words off and on he therefore intended to give up his life in the deep waters of the river seeing this his mother said to him in grief i shall also accompany you they both went on to the river krishna to give up their life where shri pad shri vallabha was also living there seeing him the mother bowed to him and said we both have decided to give up our lives in this river but I, but as committing suicide is a sin how shall we be relieved of our see, miseries without being offended then shri guru asked them what misery induces you to give up your lives narrating her whole account the woman said swami we visited holy places and observed vratas for getting a son after this we got this son but he is dullard his d- all despise him and scold him i therefore request you to bless me with a son who will be pious like your good self at least in the next birth he should prove good for all our further generations seeing her devotion shri guru said you worship ishwara uh, that is shiva with devotion and you will have a god like son nanda gauli worshiped god and hence shri krishna lived at his home your desire will also be fulfilled if you worship him devotedly 
Then the woman asked, How did the cowherd worship Sri Hari? What Vrata did they observe? Sri Guru replied, On every Shani Pradosha worship God Shiva, a tale in this respect is narrated in the Skanda Purana. There lived a righteous king Chandrasena in Ujjaini. Manibhadra was his chief counsellor. He worshipped Sri Shiva most devotedly and Sri Shiva and favoured him with the most bright Chintamani bead which he had given to his master Chandrasena. A mere touch of the bead turned iron into gold. By mere sight of the bead, one's desires were fulfilled. So all other kings desired to have such a bead. Many kings tried to got the bead from the king and offered him money for the same, but all efforts were in vain. So they all combined their forces and attacked Ujjaini. When Chandrasena was engaged in worshipping Sri Shiva on a Shani Pradosha day, the children of the cowherds watched the worship of the king and they also wished to worship Sri Shiva similarly. The boys gathered stones and prepared a Shiva temple and placed one stone as image of Shivalinga and began worshipping it with flowers and other herbs. The mothers of the boys came there and took their sons for meals to their homes, but one boy did not go home. His mother th thrashed him angrily and said, It is night now, come to have your meals. She broke the temple and threw away the image of Shivalinga. Seeing this, the boy began to weep in grief and intended to give up his life. But after some time, he fell asleep. Sri Shiva was pleased with his devotion and created a beautiful temple. A linga of precious stones was installed in it. Sri Shiva awoke the boy, looked at him with affection and asked him to have a boon from him. The boy was much delighted. He bowed to Sri Shiva and said, my mother has broken the evening worship. Kindly forgive her. Sri Shiva said, As your mother has, be, has seen the evening worship, she will get a son named Sri Krishna in the next birth and you will also have all the pleasures. The forces of the enemies were emerged. They spoke among themselves, What wonder is this? How this bright, beautiful temple has been created here within a night. Let us give up enmity and see the king who is so virtuous on friendly terms. They, said their, they sent their messengers to the king. The king requested them to come to the Shiva temple where he would see them. Chandrasena was also wonderstruck to see sun-like bright Shiva temples sprung up during the night. The cowherd boy's house who also looked very bright. The king asked the boy the reason for this miracle. The boy narrated the whole story to all the kings who had gathered there. All were much pleased to hear him. They said, you will become the king of the cowherds. They offered the boy many gifts and land and accepting Chandrasena, all the kings returned to their places. The boy went home and narrated to his mother all that had occurred. He said, Sri Shiva was pleased with my evening worship. As I requested him to forgive you even though you had broken the temple, he was not angry with you. Besides, he assured that the incarnation of Sri Krishna will stay at your home. Sri Pada Sri Vallabha narrated the significance of Shani Pradosha worship to the Brahmani and seeing her devotion placed his palm over the head of her son and blessed him. Eventually, the boy instantly had the knowledge of the Vedas 
Shastras, Tarka, Bhashya, etc. All the Brahmins and his mother were wonderstruck to see this. The mother respectfully bowed to Sri Guru and said that she was fortunate to see Sri Guru to get his blessings. She said, You are God yourself. We shall worship you in the evening. I hope I shall have a son like your good self in my next birth. Let not your words be untrue. Saying this, she began to worship Sri Guru every evening with devotion. Her son got married and had sons and grandsons. Those who are blessed by Sri Guru receive all leisure in the same way. Thus ended chapter 8 of the Guru Charitra, in which Sri Guru himself explained the importance of Shani Pradosha Vrata to be performed on a Saturday evening. It is the performance of worshipping Shiva. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmira Puravasini Tvamaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidya Dhananchadehime Goodbye.